I'm going to go ahead and start. <laughs> so um, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to this event today. I hope you're in the right spot. So this is Local Nature Backyard Photography, led by Rick Waller. So my name is Carrie Winninger, and I am the outreach lead for the Center for Environmental Inquiry at Sonoma State University. Usually we do these kind of public events in person at one of our preserves. So that would be either at our Osborne Preserve in Pen Grove on Sonoma Mountain, or at our Galbraith Preserve near Yorkville um, and Mendocino. So everything's different for us this spring too, but we are finding that it's such a powerful thing to be able to connect to people on this in this virtual space. And so thank you all for being our first semester of virtual events. And uh, please feel free and give us any feedback you have about that um, through my email, um, which you should have gotten when you registered. So before I let Rick and Jerry take it away, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about what the center does and is and how we can be a resource to you, no matter who you are, whether you're affiliated with Sonoma State or not, whether you're a student, a parent, uh, you work for the government or an organization in need of environmental solutions, or maybe you're an educator or just a member of the public who's interested, because the center really envisions this North Bay working together to find sustainable solutions. And we're inviting everybody to get environmentally ready with us. That's what my shirt says. <laughs> so uh, how do we do that? The way we want to do that is we want to build this community of learners and problem solvers that are really across all sectors of society. So we're talking about bringing firsthand understanding of our connection to the environment to you all um, and then giving you skill building experiences. And those hopefully will result in sustainable solutions. So we want to make people aware and prepared with knowledge and then engaged. And that's the key is really getting engaged here with these challenges and how you can help. So there's lots of ways you can get involved. Um, coming to public events like this is one way. There's research that you can engage in. You can take one of our training programs. So we, we teach naturalist training for both students and for, fact, and for uh, community members. Uh, we teach land management. We also have things like internship, internships and student jobs if you are a student. Um, you can access data that our programs have created, or you can lead or contribute to events like this, um, or partner with us on projects. So there's lots of ways, uh, just feel free and reach out if you ever want to get involved further. Just admitted somebody else, great. Now, the key here is that you all are important in addressing the greatest environmental challenges that you have ever seen. So one last time, thank you so much for coming to be a part of this. And I do want to talk a bit about how the day is going to go. So first, um, I would like to introduce Rick and Jerry Waller, and they're joining us from Grass Valley, where they work with people of all ages and abilities who want to get out into nature and enjoy wildlife photography. Uh, and this demonstrates how this medium is one way that we can connect to nature and, in fact, call attention to environmental challenges, even from home. Now, this type of event is called local nature. <laughs> and what that means is there's a presentation. There's time for you to all go into your own local natural areas. That could be your backyard or around the corner where there's a lot or even looking out your window, um, wherever you can get to safely and legally during the future place. And then we'll come back, we'll get some feedback, and then we'll learn a bit more. So we'd love to see your faces. I'm so glad that most people's videos are on and get you involved. It would help to have everyone's mics turned off during the presentation portion. So I am going to mute everybody. Um, but then once we have the group experience, then everybody can have their mics back on again. So what that means is if there's anything you want to say or need to say, the chat box is a great way to do that. And so before we get started, I want to make sure everyone knows where that is and how to use it. Uh, so I'm going to ask that you put two things in the chat box. One, the name you registered under, because sometimes that's different than your Zoom name. And then two, also put what type of camera you're using. We really want to know if how many people are using cell phones or how many people are uh, using different types of cameras. So if everybody could take a minute right now to type that in the chat box. And if you don't know how to do that, then just speak out and I'll tell you how to get there. Are you guys there? All right. So if you go to the bottom of your screen, you'll yep. see there's um, some buttons that pop up and one near the right might say more with three dots. And if you click on that, it'll say chat. It might just have 
a button already there that says chat. That's how you get to that chat box. All right. Awesome. It looks like most of you have it. Thank you very much. It really is helpful to get these sign-ins. And that'll give Rick and Judy a bit of a, an idea of what kind of camera they should be um, thinking about the most as they present. They covered all over the place. <laughs> We are using just about every type of phone out there, phone and camera out there. Diverse audience, fantastic. Excellent. All right. Well, I think maybe just a few of you have still not written in there, but most of you have. So at this point, I am just going to say a big thank you to Rick and Jerry and let them take it from here. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to have you join us today. And I hope this will be a pleasurable um, learning experience for you, and we're lucky to have good weather. Uh, Rick and I started Heartwork Photography about three years ago after Rick doing commercial and nature photography for over 40 years. And I have been a social worker with adults and the elderly, um, a Girl Scout leader, and also help to start FREED, Center for Independent Living. And if you don't know about the Centers for Independent Living, they're in every state with federal and state funding, and they're primarily run by people with um, disabilities to help other people with disabilities stay independent. So we put together our skills and expertise, and we are presenting events, outings, uh, Zoom classes that are accessible to everybody. When it, things return to the new normal, whatever that will be, uh, we hope to get outings going again to national parks, state parks, uh, local areas, even out of state, um, perhaps someday into Canada. These are small groups. We check out the accessibility ahead of time to make sure that there's full accessibility, not only for people who are wheelchair users or have other mobility challenges, but maybe they're um, hearing impaired or low vision. And we take everybody's accessibility needs into consideration. We um, are open to suggestions about what you would like to see in the future, as well as other Zoom classes and uh, YouTube classes that we're putting together. So if you care to contact us, you can get in touch with us two different ways. You can go to our website, which is heartworkphotography.org. Heartworkphotography.org. Or if you're a Facebook user, you can sign on and ask to join our Facebook group, which is Heartwork Photography, Accessible Nature Education. That's a mouthful. Hard work, photography, accessible nature education. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to my husband and business partner, Rick. And I am going to turn off my cell phone. And now we got the network. <laughs> Okay, and remove some notes so I can see my screen. All right. Let me change a couple uh, slides here. Because I was too busy doing other things to get <laughs> some of the stuff up about us. Okay. So, first of all, I want to, it's an honor to be uh, collaborating with uh, SSU uh, due to our work for nature and wildlife conservation and climate change awareness. Uh, and it's just a great partnership to be part of this. Um, we have very similar views and hopes. So um, it's just nice to be paired up with a group that has very similar thoughts. Today, we're going to start out. I'm going to show you some images that you're probably not going to be able to pull off in your backyard. But I seem to have a big backyard. We travel all over the place. Um, we're going to start building your skills to create images like these. And we're going to talk <clears throat> mainly about lighting and composition today. 
uh, composition first, then we're going to send you out to take some photos and come back and share them with us if you'd like. And we'll do a critique and then we'll talk about some lighting at the end, which will tell you the best times to be able to take these types of shots. This happens to be a shot of Yosemite Falls with the rainbow. And it's a naturally occurring event. And I like to say I sat there and waited forever to make this happen the way it did. But I didn't. We were driving down the road and it was perfect. So we jumped out of the car and photographed it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to discuss composition, which is basically to make your, your um, images more appealing and eye-catching. And then again, we'll talk about lighting conditions that make them better. As you can see in this image, the lighting actually makes the details show better because of the time of day we shot it. And this was almost sunset. And this is Bryce Canyon National Park. You can bring that chair in. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, patience and luck. Sometimes that's what you need when to capture some images, especially with wildlife. Um, and I was graced with the presence of this great blue heron in uh, Oz Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri for about a half an hour. It just decided it liked me and started out about 50 yards away, ended up about 25 feet away from me for a half an hour and then kind of gave me a look like I'm leaving now. Do you really want a nice photograph? And I uh, paid attention. Another thing we're going to talk about is how to enhance the colors by shooting at the right time of day to get the most out of the image. Uh, and this is Mesa Arch at Canyonlands National Park. And just at sunrise, this, this arch overhangs out over a wall and that wall is lit by the sunrise which reflects all that orangish color up into the arch. And it's the only time of day that happens. Unfortunately, it's a very popular place. So you have to get there like two hours before sunrise to get this shot and try to shoot around all the photographers. Um, we're going to talk about being prepared for action. So you can think about your camera settings. If you know something's going, you're trying to photograph wildlife. Uh, so you can stop that moment. We'll also talk about how many images you should probably take and how you should take a breath after the first one and why. We're going to talk about um, using nature's elements to draw your eye into the photograph. In this case, this is El Capitan at Yosemite. But this morning that, that we shot this, this was a little after sunrise. Um, the fog was there to, to draw your eye into the mountain and the tall trees were on both sides and it was just a great place to isolate that image. And again, we talked about anticipating the moment and I'm showing you uh, birds, but it could be pets, it could be your kids, it could be any action movement that you would want to capture and we'll talk about how to set your camera up a little bit for that. We're not going to get into that too much, but I will cover that part. And these are sandhill cranes, and they were taken at uh, an ecological, the Woodbridge Ecological Preserve in Lodi um, on a very foggy day, which really muted the colors for us. But it's, fog is a wonderful thing to photograph in. You just have to be prepared for it. And we'll, you can think about your images all you want, but sometimes you just happen to fall into a situation where you didn't ever visualize this could be part of something. And, and this was um, a photograph shooting up through a slot canyon in Antelope Canyon, which is in near Page, um, Arizona, on a Navajo reservation. And it is the only tour you can take that starts at 10 o'clock at night. So you can actually shoot the stars up through the slots in the opening of the ceiling of the slot canyon. And we're going to talk about shooting, photographing. When I say shoot, I always mean camera. Um, 
wildlife and respecting their safe margin, your safe margin, and being prepared and uh, understanding their postures. Know as much about the animal you want to photograph so that you are safe and they are safe and they feel comfortable. Um, to let you know, we were way closer than 100 yards on this photograph, but it was because we were on the road in an RV and it was walking down the road next to us after coming out of hibernation and it was busy eating plants so it could uh, have more meals afterwards. And it was about 20 feet away. We rolled down the, in, the, the window on the passenger side, could hear it breathing, but it was way too interested in food and it felt very safe that we weren't approaching it. So it, it lingered around for a few minutes while we got a lot of photographs and it was an amazing experience, but you would never do that <laughs> if you weren't that protected or using a long, long lens to get that photograph. Okay, so let's get started with backyard photography. And the most important thing is to capture the moment. And sometimes it takes more than one, well, I should say, shouldn't say sometimes. It almost always takes more than one photograph to make that happen. So be prepared after you get your first shot to then take a slight break if you can. Look at your camera and say, do I have everything set up the way I think I should to capture this image? And if you do, then go back to photographing. If you don't, make those adjustments like shutter speed. The higher the shutter speed, the more you're gonna stop action. The slower the shutter speed, the more you're gonna blur action. And your f-stops, the smaller the f-stop number, if, though, if you know about f-stops, don't worry about if you don't know about f-stops right now, because it could be, you don't get that choice on cell phone cameras. They have a locked f-stop. Whatever it is built as, it stays as. Although the new ones now have some control that you can blur the background is what we use f-stops to do if you have a DSLR. Okay, so enough about that type of stuff. We're gonna move on to actually talking about composition. First and foremost, you wanna simplify the image as much as you possibly can. You want to crop out anything that doesn't add to your image, because if it doesn't add, it detracts. In this case, I wanted to photograph the flowers. I wanted to have a contrast so I could see the control, the, the detail in them. And I wanted the background to be soft so your eye wasn't drawn to the background. That, again, this was all these almost all of these images you're going to see today were shot on a Nikon DSLR camera. Um, but there are a couple that were taken on, on cell phones that actually work better on cell phones than they do on a much higher end camera. And I do not use really expensive cameras. I basically buy refurbished Nikon equipment in the enthusiast not just below the pro level because I just don't need that kind of control yet. This image was actually shot at the uh, Center for um, Environmental Inquiry. And what I want to talk about is know about your surroundings before you go out to photograph. Carrie was giving us a tour of the preserve. She knew that they placed boards out along paths and animals congregate under them. So she was able to lift up a couple boards. We found this newt. We got in really close because you want to fill your frame as much as possible if you can. Um, and we got this shot. Now, I know that we have both cell phone photographers and DSL photographers uh, attending today. And it's a lot easier with a DSL to zoom in and keep the quality high than it is with a cell phone. A, a smartphone, if you zoom in really tight, it's doing digital zooming all the time. And digital zooming, the more you zoom in, the more your image falls apart. So you're actually better, I've, I've tested many cell phones, you're actually better 
not to zoom in more than at the most 2x, you're actually better to sh not zoom in at all and then go in and crop the image later and get, just get as close as you can and then edit the image later. It'll be much sharper than zooming in. Video isn't as critical, but still images are because you get to sit there and look at them way too long to tear them apart. Another important thing about composition is directing the eye to the central subject. And one of the tools that we use is called leading lines. And in this situation, uh, person. the spider web becomes the leading lines. And you can use many things in nature for that to happen. So all these lines, I keep wanting to point to the monitor <laughs> to show you things, and I can't do that. <laughs> Your eye enters uh, in the Western Hemisphere, our, our uh, eye enters the image from the lower left corner. So you want to control from the lower left corner into wherever your main uh, subject is. In this case, all those lines from the spider web draw you right into it. No matter where you look in the image, you get drawn into the spider. Leading lines, again, using just spokes of a wheel will draw you back into the center of the hub. And if you put what you want to photograph close to that, your eyes get pulled in along those lines. Even if you're, you might bounce around it a little bit, the image or I might go around it a little bit, but it will always come back to where the central subject is. The other thing that also pulls your eye is the highest contrast area in the image. Your eye goes to that which is about where the pumpkin and the, and the hub come together. Framing also keeps your eye in the image. In this case, I use the trees that the bald eagle is sitting in to keep your eye from going out the edges and to continue to look mainly at the body and the head of the eagle. Uh, tree branches, fences, windows, um, all those things are something you can probably find in your backyard that will draw your image, your eye into the image and draw the viewer's eye in the image. Um, get in as close as you can to the image you want to shoot and see if you see any detail of the that you get. Uh, this is just a fallen log that happened when I got close and I isolated on an area. It showed an eye and an eyebrow and uh, the shape of a face to me. So it just gives you something else to look at. And the lines actually draw you back into it. If you get over to the lower right corner, it pulls you right back into the eye. There are many rules in composition uh, we're going to use the rule of thirds just to give you a starting point. Um, this is one of the easiest ones to learn, so that we'll start with this is by nowhere the one that you may end up using, but it marks, starts to make you think to put your subject in a different place than just in the circle that is the focus spot that most cameras have. They have a circle right in the middle of their viewfinder, and that's where most people think they need to put their image. But it's more interesting if you don't put it there because the things that make your images stand out from other images is that you don't shoot it the same way other people do. And you will all develop your own style and that's exactly what you should do. It'll take you a while to get there, but keep experimenting until you find what you really love to shoot and how you love to shoot. Rules of thirds basically consists of this grid which almost all cell phones and DSLRs have on them. You can go in under your settings and turn this on. So you can see this grid laid over your viewfinder. Um, what you want to do is put the subject like eyes or a flower or whatever your subject is at one of the intersection points of these lines. And these lines are laid out at a third down and a third up vertically and a third over and two thirds over horizontally. 
So you got the four insecting points and this girl's eye, her right eye, is at the intersection of those points and it makes it more interesting. Okay, now I'll give you some more examples of, of doing this. That was a vertical shot. This is a horizontal shot. Action, you usually want more in a, um, area in front of your action than behind your action. It's just a thing that the human eye li likes to see where the action is moving to. Um, but once you've gotten used to doing this, so you may want to actually move the action almost out to the edge, which makes it really tense for the viewer, but it makes them, they don't know why, but they look at your image longer. Um, if you watch um, ads on TV, they pull that trick a lot of times to make it tense. You don't know why you still look at it. You don't necessarily like it, but you keep looking at the image and that's what it's all about. Your pets. Rules of thirds, eyes somewhere along that line close to where it intersects. Shoot down at their level, it's much more interesting have something in the foreground like the flowers and which is also sitting on one of the, the um, intersecting lines. And you'll get a much more interesting shot. And if you're shooting horizon lines, unless you have almost a perfect reflection going on between the upper and lower, like a sunset in a lake or an ocean, it is better to set your horizon line at a one of the thirds vertically. In this situation, I thought I the sky was more important to me than what was below. What was below kind of only occupied a third of the image. If I went any further down, it wasn't that interesting. This is actually a 3 a.m. sunrise up in British Columbia on a frozen lake. When you're in your backyard, there's a lot of different things to see. You're, you're pretty much used to just looking down at your eye level, but look up, look at the clouds, look if see there's something interesting going on, especially sunrise, sunset. Um, look at the moon when it's doing the late, uh, it's still up early morning. This one I think was actually about 10 a.m. yet, it was still up. And I lucked out because there was an airplane flying by it. But I also like it when the geese fly through it during migration time. Um, I used a little piece of the uh, tree limb on purpose to keep your eye from going just straight out of the image. And this is one of the few times I actually left the image, the moon, right in the center of my photograph. Make sure you get close, especially for flowers. Notice the leading line we have of the stem leading into the flower from the lower left on the left image. Um, try to be focused on the points of the flower that are closest to you. And try to um, take a couple shots, take one of the overall flower, then move in closer and see if you like what you get from that shot. You usually find when you're beginning photography you will take a shot, then you will get a little closer and take another shot, and then you get a little closer and take another shot. And after you take the third shot, you'll usually like the second one the best for a while, then eventually you will grow to like the third one and you'll forget to take the first and second one. But the, the closer you get, the more interesting the photography gets. And while you're close, you may be really lucky. I, I had been tracking this bee. I would try to get a photograph of it for about 10 minutes. And every time I got focused on the bee, it decided it was time to move on and pollinate the next um, flower. So I basically gave up on trying to capture it. And I started photographing this flower and the bee flew in and landed right in the middle of my shot. So, you know, patience, luck, and know when to move on. When you're photographing people, especially babies and toddlers, but almost all people, if you get to eye level, it identifies best with that age range. 
Toddlers, when you show them photos that you shoot from your, your eye level of them and you shoot at their eye level, they always will pick the one that is at their eye level because they identify to it. It's the, air, the level that they see at. And if you want to shoot a picture of you for them, shoot it low for you because they look at you from low. Pets, the same way. Get down to their eye level. And the more interest is if you do that. Be aware of the animals that are in your yard or around you. Um, this owl was actually flew into our addition one day. And I went out, got my first shot, walked away, thought, so I didn't scare it away, and then came back because the first shot, I didn't have anything set up, set up for it. Set my camera up and it never moved for the next 20 shots, so I didn't have to worry about it. But you never know. Give them their space, gently walk into their space, and they will stick around a lot longer. The squirrel was taken by my granddaughter uh, out at McCurker Beach uh, by Fort Bragg. Uh, and she just captured the moment of it sitting there eating uh, out through the, the brush. And when you shoot like on that, just try to make sure you're actually focusing on the animal and not the brush in front, because that sometimes will drive your camera nuts out of all the grasses that grow up in front of them. Um, if you want to do an image that's more soothing, more romantic, take close-ups of things with water droplets on them. These are natural water droplets. It was right after a, a, an evening rain. This was just taken out in my front yard. But if it's the time of year that you don't have that, you can always get a little mister and put some glycerin water in it and spray it and have water droplets that beat up just like this. Make sure you look up a little bit or down on the ground and see the birds walking around. Uh, if you can get photographs of them, just be aware little birds are really, really hard to photograph because their heads and bodies move so fast, you need a very high shutter speed to stop their motion. You can set one of your scenes, if you have a camera or, or cell phone with a scene, to sports, which does that for you. And you could capture, have a better chance of capturing these images. If they're perched like these ravens were in Yosemite, then they're not going to move a whole bunch. But the little bitty birds move really fast. So it's a, more of a challenge. You'll have to work your way towards that goal. This is another shot from the preserve by, at Sonoma State. Um, when you have spider webs, especially if there's dew on them, they kind of tie your image together. And this was an overcast day, so you get to see the detail a little better. It doesn't make the white so white that they, you lose detail, or the dark so dark that you can't see into them. And then capture the moment again. I got the first shot on this blue belly lizard and then made sure my camera settings were correct. I came out and back and photographed some more, but it was way too busy eating the bug to worry about me. So it basically never moved. So I probably had 40 shots, kept the two best ones that I liked. And always, Capture as much detail in flowers as you can. And one of the best ways to do it, and we'll reinforce this when we get into lighting, is to um, use side lighting. Side lighting or back side lighting, where the lighting's coming from the edge, it lights the detail in an image much better. Another image from the preserve. Um, the, just had mushrooms growing off a tree. And I didn't want everything in focus. I wanted to pull your eye to the closest. And usually if you use a partial focus, you want the closest thing to you to be in focus, or at least the biggest thing that's next to it to be in focus. If you leave it all soft and go to the back one, it doesn't draw the eye nearly as well. 
And then flowers, again, focus on the first one. This, this was at a, um, a place near us in the foothills that annually lets you go out and see the tulips. And it had rained the morning before, the night before, and it was just a gorgeous thing. Focus on the closest one, include some of them in the background to reinforce the image. But the most important thing to remember, capture the moment. Always <laughs> capture the moment. How often do you see an elk run out to a road, stick its tongue out and look at you? <laughs> it's out of focus, I admit. I had no chance to get the second shot. It didn't matter. Give up all the things we talked about today. Capture the image. If you have time, go back and get the second shot. If not, you at least have the image in the memory. And that is pretty much it for composition. So uh, I think we are now in our 20 minutes of going out and doing what we talked about. And Carrie may want to fill you in on uh, how to go about that right now. Yeah, thank you so much, Rick. So um, this is our time. We're about five minutes over, but that tends to happen. So the idea here is now just using everything that, that you've learned, um, going out and having a chance to take your own photographs. So um, if you have any questions about what the goal should be or, or how to do this, um, or if anything comes up while you're taking photographs, then Rick will stay on the line here. So you can always come back and ask. Um, but we do encourage you to go out and spend this time um, taking your own photos. So uh, one thing that I wrote in the email that you all received was the Google folder. So I hope that works for everybody. And that's a place where we're hoping that you will upload at least one of the photographs that you take during this time. And that way Rick will be able to pull up uh, those photographs and we can discuss them and share with them and with everybody. So if you wouldn't mind, um, it would be great. I will also put the link uh, in the chat box for that Google folder so it's easier to access. Um, and if you have questions about the technology, again, ask us. So um, because we're just running a little late, originally we were going to be 10.50 coming back, but I'd like to give you 15 minutes more than 10. So let's make it 10.55. Does that sound okay, Rick? Sounds good to me. Okay, so we're going to say everybody come back here by 1055. Um, and if you could maybe arrive one minute early to try and get that photo uploaded, that would be perfect. If anyone has questions at this point, you can just unmute yourself and ask it. I do see some people in the chat box, so I'm going to try and answer you that way. But I am going to assume that everyone is free and will take off where they need to go now. Have fun. Hi, this is Michael. Hi, Hi Michael. Michael. Uh, Rick, one question, uh, comment to you. My phone, an S9, yeah. uh, has Pro Mode, which I can set the f-stop. Okay, good to know. So if, if you want to take that to what we were talking about, to knock out the background, use the smallest number f-stop. Yeah. And to make more in focus, use the highest number f-stop or somewhere towards that direction. Thank you. You're welcome. And Rick, somebody said, I'm unclear about side lighting. Side lighting. And we'll talk about this more when we come back. Side lighting means that you want to get the lighting, the sunlight coming in from the side of your subject or maybe just slightly backlit and side lit. The more you take it to the side, the more it picks up all the textures and throws light shadows, like if you're shooting something in the snow, it accentuates the detail in the snow more for you. Um, but especially flowers, the side lighting allows you to see the detail much better. If it's front lit, it kind of gets all evenly lit. If it's side lit, it shows the hot, the brights and the, and the softness of it much easier. It, does that help? I don't even know if they're still listening, but I'm glad that you were able to answer it. <laughs> um, somebody else is just talking about the Google folder, so I went ahead and posted that, so you can click on that link to get to the folder. And uh, there is a comment, how does everyone know how to upload their photo? So um, I'm hoping that everybody has a Google account, which is um, what I was uh, hoping you would all get put together and ready before the event. And if you have a Google account, then any way you can get your photo 
onto an internet capable device, it'll be pretty easy to then either if you want to share it to the Google folder, or if you want to go into the Google folder and then click add and then select the photo. Um, so some people can do that straight from your phone. Some people might need to take it from their camera, then you know either plug it in or send it to their computer and then upload it from their computer. So if that's the case, maybe take an extra minute, give yourself an extra minute to do that. But it is pretty simple if you open that Google folder, just click add um, and then you'll be able to add your photograph. All right. And then some people have to take off, totally understandable. This will be recorded by the way, so anyone can access this later on down the line. And I also see, so it's actually great to see that so many people who have their videos on, left their video on? Yes. Just left. <laughs> they just left. <laughs> they're out doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> All these empty rooms, it's great. <laughs> Yeah. So are you guys able to see the chat box, Rick and Jury, in case you want to see other people that might be typing in? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. So the last one I see was about, um, thanks for offering the class. Gotta go. <laughs> and I put your website and Facebook in there earlier too. Thank you. We have a friend from San Diego and two friends from Wisconsin. Oh, lovely. So that's exciting. Oh yeah. It looks like there's a couple people from Grass Valley. Yeah, I have a friend who is here in Marin that's attending right now. Uh-huh. And um, and I see that Lake Cal is joining us too. See that too. And I see a few names from people that I just have gotten to know their names this spring because they've been attending a lot of our virtual events. So you're reaching people that way too. Great, and so are you. You're doing a great job, Carrie. Oh, you guys are so kind. Thank you. Wait, we are just so thankful for you guys doing this. It's really been a whirlwind for everybody trying to act <laughs> this spring. Yeah. You jump right in there. So you, you look at you just look at how you can keep doing this one way or another. And I'm just so glad that you're doing this. This is the first presentation we have done on Zoom, so it's uh, it's it's helping me a lot to understand what we need to do in this situation right now. And so we're, we're looking at getting a lot more stuff up on our website and probably on our, our YouTube channel to, to augment this type of stuff, so. I can imagine that specifically with the work you do, this could give, this could increase accessibility, right? Not having to go to a physical location. Definitely. Um, yeah, it, we're, there's, there's just so much knowledge different that, that we've, we're trying to look at all of the ways that we can just make this happen. And sometimes it's got to be virtual and sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, but you just encourage people to get back out there safely and, and enjoy it when they can. I was watching the opening of uh, uh, Yellowstone and just people being nuts and being not observing there's social distancing, nobody wearing masks, and you go, hmm, they're going to be shutting you back down real soon. because. Of I mean, I just heard, I don't know for sure if this is true, that Disneyland is reopening. Yeah, um, and actually Eisner has been on uh, Newsom's board for the, the business side of this thing. Um, they're, it sounds like they're going to open it extremely carefully, much better than the airlines are doing it. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the video. I don't know if I yeah. saw this the other day. The video of Jet Blue. Where they Sorry, just to interrupt. Do you see the dog? There's now a dog in our um, meeting. I love when that happens. Oh, and now there's the person. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about capturing the moment, right? Yep. <laughs> But they they were they were running two in one row, one in the next. So they were having like two feet of separation. <laughs> and you go, and you're bragging about that? Every everybody is just I mean, there are certain organizations, businesses that the whole model is be as close as you can. So mm -hmm. gosh, the changes that are having to be made it's just yeah. like schools 
right? We're learning about how schools might be uh, delivered next fall for K through 12. Yeah, um, I was watching a CNN thing on that last night that was specifically about education, mm. uh, what they're thinking. Uh, um, Notre Dame is opening up for the fall. Um, what are going to have their semester over by Thanksgiving. Oh. But they're saying they've already, you know, had to find where they can do quarantine and all that set up before they even think about opening the door. So we'll see how that goes. I, I just hope people, you know, life has to go on, but you just want to be as careful as you can be too. And the CSU system, right, is primarily virtual next fall. Yes, so yeah. they haven't said 100%, um, but it is, you know, we're planning on delivering everything virtual um, because it, even if some uh, classes could potentially have some in-person element, not every single person will be able to take advantage of that because if they're at high risk or if they get quarantined or whatnot. So everything seems, it seems like we have to make sure that every class has a way of being virtual. Even, even if there's a, like I, there might be perhaps grad students, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, um, that are allowed to do particular elements um, in person for their research or, but we're just not sure, you know, it's such an evolving situation. Um, so Carrie, this is Anthony. Um, hi, Anthony. Hey, how are you? Um, uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, this might, I mean, if you're doing things virtually, it might be a really good time to, uh, to do that accessible workshop that got canceled. You know, by, uh, since, uh, wheelchair users, you know, it's much easier to go online. Um, so Rick and I and Jerry are all talking about doing multiple future events. I won't give, I won't promise them to do it for everyone yet, but um, the idea might be something virtual next fall with that in mind, but then Good. when things open back up, also trying to do what we originally planned to do with photography right. for all abilities, where we can actually bring up pond water critters and look under microscopes and, and, you know, make it more interactive with natural uh, materials. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I mean, Rick, do you want to say anything about that? Well, we're excited to do this. We're, we're yeah, Carrie, whatever you want to throw at us. <laughs> <laughs> we're pretty much going to say yes, Carrie. We love working well. with you. <laughs> no mistake. So yeah, um, just, just Anytime we both have an idea, we'll just bounce it off of each other and see if it fits in the curriculum somewhere. Well, I've uh, been running a couple of meetings and uh, it's allowed uh, online Zoom meetings. And it's, uh, I've seen people that I haven't seen for months or years even showing up at the meetings because uh, it's hard for them to get out these days, you know, and I don't want to underscore that too much that disabled people aren't out and about in the world, but, you know, I think this does provide us an opportunity that we wouldn't have otherwise. Can I, I agree with that. Carrie? Yeah, 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 go ahead. How do I get my pictures uh, onto the Google thing for you guys if the whole screen is taken up with the Zoom? Oh, okay, all Your right. Question two. What? All right, well, I just answered to somebody named Patricia. Um, that because uh, she was wondering if oh. she can't access the folder and she just wants to know if she can email it to me and then I can post it. I can do that for a limited number of people, no problem. But if everyone does it, it's gonna take some time. So the thing with the Zoom is you can actually make the box smaller on your computer so that you can also be do using a different program. So if you have a Mac or a PC, you know, it's gonna be a different button on the top corner, but it'll be a um, like maximize button. So like on a, on a Mac, it's um, green uh, to enter full screen or to get out of full screen. And if once you're out of full screen, you can actually just drag the corner of the box and make the zoom window really small. And then you can see everything else on your monitor and still operate the controls. My screen, uh, I have a Mac and the whole screen is taken up with Zoom. There's no, none of those red or blue things in the corner. I know that. Upper left, upper take, left corner in a Mac, isn't it? If you hover over the top, sometimes they will appear. Uh, hovering. That did it. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Karen, are you still having some challenges? Yeah, I, I've got the, uh, I, I've got 
the top, but I'm not sure which command uh, that I'm using. I see a, you know, a red button and a green button. And uh, so exit full screen, maybe. Yeah, do not hit the red button. <laughs> I got it, thank you. There that you go. was it, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we are all learning technology right now. <laughs> yep. So Anthony, was there something else you were, we were following up with? No, no, I uh, just wanted to find out where we were going with the uh, workshop because I think it's really a good idea. And is I'm there any particular direction? Oh, sorry. Um, is there any particular direction you think would be good now that this one has taken place? Um, like, how would you envision the next event working that is in your ideal world? Well, I think particularly, uh, is Lake still around? I know she was on earlier. She's um, taking photographs at the moment. <laughs> right. Um, you I'm know, by promoting it through. Um, oh, she's back. I see her. Oh, good. Uh, promoting it through DSLC. And um, I don't know, maybe people could take photos and then bring them to the, uh, the workshop. That was something that Rick actually suggested. Um, and so that's something that we could definitely consider. Because I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much uh, instruction people are going to need. I mean, that's I mean, that's where, Rick, your uh, experience is going to be really helpful because it's like, you know, do you, do you do an intermediate class or do you do a, a you know, a more basic one? Um, there's decisions there. Yeah, and, and you, you have to feel that out by who gets interested in the image in, in, the, in the class itself. But I always recommend, so this is pretty, a pretty basic composition lighting thing right. covering today. Um, I, I'm, I already have all the stuff in other PowerPoints that does a much stronger one that goes over camera controls and how to make all this happen. And so it's easy for me to gear up from going from a basic to an, all the way to advanced and, and so I'm, I'm open to anything that we think would work well. So any input anybody wants to give us, Blake, anything that you would love to do, we're, we are wide open to do this stuff now. Yeah, we, we met, um, I guess it was last year. Um, uh, and we were trying to brainstorm some ideas, Anthony. Um, because I know the Osborne Preserve wasn't very accessible, but we decided right. it would be close to this area, kind of. But um, yeah, I think this is fun, except I'm having a heck of a time saving my image. It keeps showing up as like an inner. All you should have to do is just oh, here it is. over and drop. I see a lot of people have uploaded their photos already, and it looks like it is 1055. So if we just want to start thinking about wrapping up, but um, I know people usually take an extra minute or two than they expected. The one thing about the uh, accessible workshop is, I mean, what interests me in particular is how particularly wheelchair users have a different perspective, yeah. uh, just in terms of height, but also in terms of, is, is there a difference in aesthetics? Is there a difference? in terms of what people notice. And that's the stuff that'd be fun to explore in a workshop. Yeah, I agree. It is a different perspective that lower. So that's, that's even fun. Yeah. When, oh, I found it. Okay. when Jerry and I were in town for our meeting with you guys, um, we went out to Spring Lake and Spring Lake is um, out of Santa Rosa. Right. Or is that Watson? Whatever, wherever it, it is. is. Yeah. Um, and it would seem the trail around the whole lake seemed pretty darn accessible. It is. It's so a great it's place. Maybe a good place for us to do something in that for that. And the lighting, it was foggy the morning we were there. There were turkeys running all over the place. And right. A lot to photograph. And the little time that we ran out there and <laughs> ran to the meeting. <laughs> So yeah, there's definitely areas around there where we can we can do accessible stuff. Cool. Okay, downloaded. Okay, um, 
Carrie and I am not seeing anybody's image but your image, but you see them all, right? Carrie? Uh oh, Dude, Carrie, did you freeze? Frozen. frozen. Mm -hmm. We've lost her for a minute. Looks like we lost Carrie for a few minutes. And I am not, I think she only. But you can't see it, Rick. It's like a. Certain images. Big fuchsia, fuchsia flower. <clears throat> Why don't you take questions? Rick? Yes. Hi, this is Margot Rollins. Carrie, you have assigned me the co-host role in case her internet went down, which it seems like perhaps it did. It looks like it just did, yes. <laughs> it looks like it just did, yeah. Um, so are you trying to look into the Google folder to see people? I have the folder and it's open, but I can only see the image that Carrie put in it, so I should. Reload it, maybe. I have. I did. Oh. I've, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've refreshed it about five times, so I'm thinking it has Hi, to do with the permission of Carrie's back. I'm back. My computer okay. had just had just gone down. Thanks, Margo, for stepping in. So, <laughs> so I missed the last maybe mm, two minutes. Okay. Um, I'm only seeing the image that you put up originally into the drive. I can't see any of the other ones. So, oh, I see a bunch of people. The problem is if you want to just handle them, and I will drop my share, and you can share that drive up. Well, before we do that, go ahead and just refresh your screen because I see a I lot know. of different photos here. And I, I don't know how to share my photo. I have it in my camera. I'm looking on a computer. Um, let me just talk with Rick for one moment oh, okay. about okay. Um, how to look at all the photos that people I, are, are submitting. Yeah, so I'm Rick, are you, are you able to just, have you refreshed it and see yes. if that works? Many times. Okay. Let me send, um, why don't you go ahead and go to the link that I put in the chat box because maybe that Carrie, it, it's in a it's in a different folder, Carrie. They're going up to a folder called Picks for Class. Huh. Yeah, there's a folder on Picks for Class on what you shared. There's yeah. a folder within a folder I see. So why don't I send the link to the main why don't you folder? Just share that folder with me again. <laughs> I'll go ahead and put that in the chat right now. Okay. Let me see. There we go. I just hit that in the chat. Okay. Okay, now the person who was um, trying to get their photo up, if you're in the Google Drive, click the button on the top left that says new, and then file up. Go to the Google Drive on the phone, and then, because I've got it on the screen on the computer, but I've got to get it on the phone, right? Um, it depends no. on where your photo is stored. So you could, for example, just go on your phone and go on the, phone. the Google Drive link on your phone. And then when you're in the drive, there should be a button that says new with a little plus sign on it. Okay. And if you click on new, it should say uh, there's options. One of them is file upload. And that's what you want to click. Okay, I'm going to try that. <laughs> Okay, I now see everything. I am going to uh, stop the share on the PowerPoint. Wonderful, Rick. I'm glad. Okay, I'll just, I'll just watch others. I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if you also wanted to email yourself the photo and then open it on the computer, you could open Google Drive on the computer because sometimes the interface looks different on a phone or a computer. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. Let's <laughs> do, do you want us to mute ourselves? Oh, um, no, I think it's okay as long as there's no background noise at this point. Okay. So are, is everybody seeing the shared screen with the bee and the flower? Yes. Yeah, and I see everybody seems to be back. Okay. Oh, great. So you're not going to see my face looking at you now because I got to look at the photos. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can drag this over a little bit. Oh, it's, it's taking up a, a good amount of the screen. We can see it. And I can open that up more. Okay, <laughs> great shot. Well, now we can't see the picture. We see your. And this is Lakes, right? Yeah. Okay. Lakes. Right now we do not see the photograph. We see the list on the Google Drive. You see the list. Okay, I shared the wrong screen. Put it back with. <laughs> Let me stop that share. Let's do a different share and see if I can find the screen. That should be it. 
Now we see everybody. This is wonderful. <laughs> wow, I got to get rid of that though. Sorry. <laughs> Screen two. Let's try this. Now do you see it? Yes. Yeah. Yay. Excellent. Okay. Great capture. You're in nice and close. You stopped, like you stopped the bee in the middle of flight. <laughs> I am impressed. Wow. Great job. Um, uh, yeah, I, you want to teach me? <laughs> it's funny, that was the first photograph I took, too. Right. I was like, oh, you uh, know, and, and, and I listen. couldn't get it afterwards. I kept following him because yep. I can't be good, and especially with the cell phone, I thought, oh, it's probably blurry, and I kept trying to take it. But yep. I was trying to get the um, the stems of the flower to create that those yep. lines you were talking about, but Absolutely. I can't get that. But. And, and it's just amazing when things happen when you're photographing. I know. Good so, job, Lake. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, the only thing I would do with this image after the shot, crop in tighter afterwards, okay. or crop it on your phone, make it just be that. I don't, don't care if I see anything behind it because that is the shot. Right. right. Great job. Okay, moving on. Wait a minute. Do you want me to leave? Oh, I'll go in there. Ah, great yeah, shot. Great. I keep, keep hearing the backdrop, but I don't need, you don't need to hear oh, that. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then this is cheers. Somebody has some background noise. If there's any background noise, it would be great to mute yourself if possible. So this is another great <laughs> shot. Um, soft background, so you're focused on the subject. The flower, the bee coming. <laughs> Must be a lot of bees in your area right now. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's a great shot. Again, the only thing I would do with this image is uh, I'd probably darken it just slightly after after the shot and crop in to, to mostly the bee and the flower. Good job. Nice. Wow. That was my shot. Sorry, I didn't have time to go out today. I had to. Uh, these are from uh, March 30th in my neighborhood. <laughs> Ah, you knew what I was going to talk about. <laughs> the date timestamp. I did see the timestamp. <laughs> uh, flower shots. Um, and we talked about focus in the center. So you're using a really wide open aperture to, to get your depth of field to be very narrow. That means what's in focus. Um, I would probably do, I do this very similar to what you do. I would crop into the shot a little bit in the foreground so it's not quite so much unfocused on the front. That's about that, and that's my desire. You establish what you love. So, but that would be- yeah, I did this one in several different ways, like some where it's all hazy, you know, out of focus in the background. I wasn't sure which is the best way. This is the side lighting, I think, a good example of side yes, lighting. this is a good, si good example of side lighting. Notice the detail in the center, all the little spikes sticking up, all that's lit because of the side lighting and you can see that detail. I used to be a commercial photographer. I had total control of my lighting in the studio, moved outside and said, gee, I don't know, I can't control any of this. So I had to rethink times that I photographed all the time. Yeah, it was later in the day. Uh, very nice. It, you, are, you are right on this stuff. Um, Take your contrast down a little bit and kick up your saturation a little bit and just see what you, if you like that or not. What I like about this shot is that this is like a, a shrub that people walk by like every day. Right. And I, including myself, and, but when you go down and you look at it close up, it, it's really interesting. It is. And if you cropped into the left side a little bit more, I think that would draw the eye a little bit more too. And I don't know if you've ever tried using vignette. If you put a real light one over this, it'd really draw the eye to the center one without taking the rest of it away. Say that again, using what? The vignette in post-production. Okay. Which darkens the corners, but don't overdo that. Do it really subtly. Can I say one thing We're real way quick? beyond what we talked about this morning. Carrie needs to talk. Yes, Carrie. Um, I would. I love the point that was just made about photography being able to focus our attention on things that we pass by on a regular basis and, yes. and maybe see them in a different way. Because I think that's one of the powerful 
things that can happen with nature photography is that we're starting to pay attention to our environment more. So I just really like that that was said and think uh, maybe we can, we can see that as we look at these other photographs as well. Um, and then there was a question about how many photographs each person should upload. Yeah, I think right. because we have such a large group, maybe we each just do one at first. And then if we have time, we can go back and do a couple others. Okay, and I'll try to look at the list on the names because I was just rolling through. Them. I think that was all of mine, sorry. Yep, that's <laughs> no, all right. Hey, beautiful. Yeah, pileated woodpeckers. I still do not have this shot. Whose shot is this? Or acorn, acorn woodpeckers, I think. Or the acorn? The pileated yeah. are larger. Yep, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I noticed some of these don't have people's names on them and some do. So if it's your photograph, please pipe up. <laughs> yep, and this is. Peter, so I'm going to go through. I love that. Wow. <laughs> Again, I just crop in a little bit tighter because my I, I come from advertising. And you got a tenth of a second to stop somebody's images of they're thumbing through a magazine, so you got to be really tight and arrest them right away. And so I'm always cropping in really tight. But I, the shot I probably take starts out like that and then crop it afterwards. And have I got beyond Peter yet? Yes. That's me, Cynthia. Cynthia. Yep. Nice. I like this a lot. I really do. It's really soothing, really nice lighting. It picks up the detail and everything really well. Um, and being shot today, we are shooting at some of the worst times that you can photograph right now. After about 10.30 to just about right now, maybe six, not good lighting. But it under the tree, it created shade. So um, the contrast between the bark and the, yes. the whatever those things are. I and, thought and the detail is really nice. Is it a little bit overcast by you right now? It is. Yep, perfect. Yeah, and that's my, my cell phone. Very nice. I really like that. Nice composition, nice leading me into the flowers and all the texture. It's just a really nice photograph. Thank you. Thank you. And Rick, someone actually just mentioned um, it might be nice for people to share whether they did use a camera or cell phone. Oh, so that we know. Yes. Yeah, like um, and then also, it looks like some people's photos floated to the top. Um, so they might be skipped otherwise, um, if at some point you could go back to the top and see. Yeah, I haven't refreshed, so right now I'm in order. <laughs> okay, great. I'll go through this and we'll see what happens. All right. Okay, that was, this is Susan's? Susan, in, now you're not in state, you're a long ways away. You may be our first <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sue. Hi. I love that you went in after the detail on the on the, the leaves and the, the flowers and the leaves. And this was on a cell phone. Or is this, uh, this is on a real small little camera. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's just I think I can't tell. It's just it's hard to focus with those things. So. That's the yeah. only thing. See if you can get in a little bit tighter and get it to focus. But other than that, that's 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 the stuff. The leaves lead you into the image and and make it nice, tight, and focused. And that would be a great way to do it. Okay. This one is Christina. I like that you got tight, you filled the whole frame with the flowers, and that's that's the important thing. That there's nothing in that photograph other than what you want them to look at. Um, the lighting on the one in the upper middle, upper right, is the one that I pulls my eye because of the contrast of the white and the dark. Um, so that is, is the main focus. And the only thing to improve this is crop it afterwards and just bring it in a little bit tighter into that area. Um, again, you're all going to develop your own style. It was a nice use of rules of thirds to break it up. Nothing's right in the center. Nice shot. Thank you. Let me scroll up my list here. 
And this is Karen, correct? Yes. Oh, I like this. I, I like, again, is it overcast there a little bit right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That, and that really helps because if we did this on a bright sunny day, it'd be really hard to see all these different soft colors back in there and all the detail and see the detail back in the shadow. I'm pointing at the screen. Nobody can see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But overcast days give us some of the nicest lightings for flowers and anything that has a lot of detail. It really picks up that detail uh, and lets you see all of it. You can always go in and build up contrast later if you want to, but it's hard to take the contrast down. So it's better to shoot a little bit soft and and build contrast later. And Karen, I really like how playful it is because yeah. it almost looks like this creature is trying to eat the flowers or smell them. <laughs> He's actually uh, uh, called Bama. He's a uh, deity that uh, in Indonesia they put over mm -hmm. the doors to scare away bad spirits. All Excellent. right. <laughs> and I, I like that it's in the lower third. You went with the thirds, the eyes down almost to that third on the bottom and the flowers are augment it, but don't take away from it. Um, if we had side lighting on this, if, if the lighting was good for that, side lighting coming in and hitting that face would be wonderful. It would really yeah. pop it. But you did great with the lighting you had to deal with right now. Thank you. Thanks. Marlena, nice shot. Thank you. You use the rule of thirds. You use the hardest point in the rule of thirds to pull this off. The, the <laughs> upper left corner is a hard place to control to get your people not to wander around in the whole photograph. But you made sure it was dark off in the, in the right hand side so your eye doesn't go there. It stays right on the flower. And you captured the side lighting it lit, glowing really nice so you can see all the detail around the main um, part of the flower. Great shot. Thank, Thank you. you. And this is your second one, correct? Yeah, I actually uploaded maybe four, I think. So sorry to hog it. I just got excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got excited. And I just want to give a, a quick update. So Rick, if you want to present for your second um, PowerPoint for just five minutes instead of 10. We can take yeah. another five minutes to go through people's work, but if we could just do one person, one per person. We will try to run through. <laughs> Is this? That's mine as well. I'll tell you when we're out of them. <laughs> It's like Rick is frozen. Oh, I thought it might be me. Okay. Did he shoot? <laughs> did he? Did he shoot that with a cell phone? Or <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Marlene, yeah, you might as well tell us about this while he's frozen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I thought it was me too. That was frozen. Well, this is just flowers in my yard, um, and that's what I am currently so excited about um, photographing. And so, yeah. was it on a uh, phone or a yeah, uh, camera? It's an, it's an iPhone SE. So I would crop out the top uh, where there looks like a banana or something in the background. Um, let me get back to it. Now I can't see it anymore. I lost the view because you know what? I think our presenter fell off and I left myself um, without video just because my computer um, connection is unstable, but we lost him as speaker view. Well, I'm able to I'm able to get the screen share back up so that we can at least look at the photographs. Not that I have anything intelligent to say about them, but um, why don't I go? We ahead can and all look enjoy at them. Yeah, yeah, we can until he gets back. Hopefully, he will. It's so fun seeing everybody's um, gardens and spaces around them. Yes. So I'm a longtime photographer, and if anybody else here doesn't mind, I'll, I can comment on some pictures. Thank you, Michael. And these are, these are very personal opinions. Uh, as was stated earlier, everybody has their own taste. And can you see that right there? Yeah. Yes. The I'm horse? Gonna, Rick's actually calling me. So if you want to comment on that, I'm going to talk to him. So again, whether you can do it on your computer or on your phone, um, if you look at the background, if you're trying to get the horse, the tree is very distracting. 
So if you crop in closer and, and isolate the, the horse, um, as, as Rick had pointed out several times, cropping really to, to remove distracting elements is an important feature of uh, photography. Well, why don't you keep trying to connect by internet? Um, hold on real quick. All right, guys, let me go to the next photograph. Oh, we did that one already. I'm not quite sure. There's one. So why don't you guys call um, the number just so you can at least have the audio on and then keep trying to connect via video as well. Is that okay? Can you do that? So the picture um, is this? I, yes, I will. I will send it to you. It's mine. I will. Who's I will. mine? <laughs> Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. So, so here's a here's a very simple thing. On the very right of the picture, you see that blue at the, uh, the top third. There's a little blue at the right side of the edge of the frame. Yep. If you just crop that out. Right. Because that takes the eye just a little bit yeah. away from this the is, image. Yeah, uh, this is straight out of the camera. Usually I have a whole workflow process that yeah. I go yeah. through. Right, so we're not talking about you personally, but I'm just saying for yeah. people who are looking at this picture, right? you got to be able to see distracting elements in the photo and take them out if you can. Um, I, I worked with a woman at work once. She had these pictures she thought were horrible. And all I did was crop and crop and crop. And she said, oh, my God, my pictures are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, love that. That's a beautiful yeah. shot. I love the black and white. Mm -hmm. Man, dark. Wow. That is gorgeous. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move on to the whatever's next. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Where'd you bury this person? <laughs> that's just pretty. It's just out there in the, in the garden. I got nothing to say about that. That's just gorgeous. This is, uh, uh, Rick was talking about vignetting and I used, I vignetted this a bit more than I usually would just because it has kind of a, a, a slightly older look to it. So I thought I could get away with it. Also, there's a, a hose running in lower right. And so I used the, uh, uh, I darkened that a great deal, figuring that it would highlight the, statue and take away the distraction of the hose which led your eye just right off the frame on both the bottom you end. did all that in 10 minutes yeah i'm 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 fast with lightroom you know it just that's good so yeah. explain what vignetting is to the rest of the group okay vignetting i don't know how many of you i use lightroom which is a uh is a great way to catalog photos i mean i at this point, I've got about 12,000 photos and I've got to have some way of cataloging them all. But it's also a good way of manipulating photos and it's much easier to use than Photoshop. And in Lightroom, you can use vignetting, it's called, to where you can darken or lighten the edges of the photo. And it's a trick that um, they use a lot in portraiture. And if you overdo it, it looks like crap. So you have like to be anything really else you overdo. careful. Yeah. Right, but Terry, at next. times, it, it really does the trick. I think it's kind of cheesy, but it works. Well, that's yeah. fascinating. I love that. All right. Sneakers. Yeah, it was my wife's. <laughs> Never mind. You, you already had one. Right. <laughs> I love color, so. It... We did this one already, Gary. Oh, oh close up. Wow. Who's is that? That's my second one, so you might want to just go on. All right, so I have two, uh, but I, but I, for a, for a reason. If you can go to my second one, this is this is it, it came out in a different order. They're not there. Okay, go back to the other one. Sorry, that wasn't it. So I shot this with a cell phone. I put two pictures up. One was the original, which that spider is about the size of one hundredth of the picture. So I cropped it in the camera, and I I did a little bit of. Uh, lighting changes and, and exposure to, to bring out some detail. He is the tiniest spider I had ever seen. And I, and I tried to use my magnifier to shoot it with zoom and it came out like crap. So I shot it at regular distance and then, and then cropped it in, which, what, which is something that Rick said earlier. Sometimes when you zoom with your cell phone, you're only using optical zoom and, and 
pictures look like crap and he's right most of the time. Yeah. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> now I don't know where I was. It was probably spider. Can you go so. to spider two? Let's do that one now. You've you, done me already. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. So there's I'll spider one. So that was the original, that was the original spider picture. Yes, Margo? Oh, well, there's, there's a whole folder up above. The very top one that says fix your class that has a few things in it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so did we do any of the person's piece uh, photography before? Any of the? Yes, have that's mine, Marlena. Oh. That's right. mine. And we got and mine. And mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. Okay. You Joanna. Is like mine. Yeah. Beautiful. Orange is my favorite color. So, so since you shot this in the middle, and, and Rick was talking about the rule of thirds, if right. you prop out the right side, you'll actually move the picture over, yeah. and, that, and that, that will give you the rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't shoot the rule of thirds, you can crop the rule of thirds. Oh. Right. And we did that one, and we did that one. that one. So there's another folder, somebody said. Yeah, I'm just making sure, and that was mine okay. from a while back. So now... I think we've gotten through everything there. Oh, uh, okay. That's too cute. That one, that gets a prize. <laughs> that gets a prize. Shooting. That's the rule of thirds, right? And I have the same problem. When I say I'm going to shoot birds, people go, what? And I go, with my camera. <laughs> so you don't shoot that was, with the, that, was with the, that was with the phone. Oh. Very well done with the phone. Are you expecting longer? You have to capture the moment with any animal, too. <laughs> yeah, my rule is take a picture and then try to get a better picture. Because if you try to get too close to a lizard to get a better, the best shot, he'll run away and then you'll have no shot. Yeah. So shoot something and then try to get closer to a bird or especially anything that's likely to move. And then try to get a better shot. All right, I'm moving on to the next one. Just navigating a lot of stuff right now, so thanks for your patience. Oh. All right. Interesting. Uh, that's mine, and I've already had the. Okay. I've already had it. Some oak galls. What are they called? They are galls, G A L L, and they're formed by parasitic wasps or flies. And that's where they lay their eggs and their larvae grow up and they're safe. Oh my goodness. Thank you for that lesson. Mm -hmm. Jeff? Yes. Um, the only thing I would add to this one is the brown at the right bottom. I would crop that out if, if I could. Okay. I'm looking at that and going, you know, I want to see these two galls in the, in the, in the frame and not that one. You know what's interesting is it looks like those are actually uh, the one in the bottom right is an old gall that is uh, that has an exit hole. So the the wasp or flies have become adults and flown out. So either yeah maybe remove it, but also maybe just move it over and include it, and that way we're seeing different stages of yeah. galls. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that that's what that was, Jeff? Yes. Okay. <laughs> different ages, and I did get I did get one with all three ages. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was fruit. So <laughs> good, thing I didn't try to, good thing I didn't try to eat it. And that's another one of Jeff's, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, can I get back there? It looks like that's it. Is there anybody whose pictures we did not see? Maybe I don't think I was able to successfully upload a picture, although I tried. This is it looks like these are what we started with. All right. Well, I think that we got through everybody. I know that Rick and Jury are trying to call in, and they're, oh, oh my, I, they just appeared. Oh, my gosh. What timing? Okay. <laughs> so they're coming into the room right now. But as they're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you a little bit about what I was going to do for the end of the event, um, which is just tell you about um, what's coming up, because this is just one in a series of 
over two dozen events that we've been holding this spring and we still do have at least three more coming up. Um, one of those is not even published yet, but two of them are. So next Friday, I wanna tell you about one called Learn from a Naturalist, Storytelling in Nature. So this one's gonna be by one of our long-term dedicated naturalists, uh, John Lynch, and he's gonna share some stories based on nature explore how to be a more effective storyteller, and then possibly guide all of us into jointly making a new story, uh, which is a really powerful way to communicate and connect with nature. Um, and then the Thursday after that, June 4th, is called Deep Dive, Sonoma Mountain Geologic and Climactic Evolution. This is going to be very exciting, slightly nerdy and wonderful. It's by um, geology instructor Nicole Myers from SSU, and she's going to talk about the formation of Sonoma County over the last 140 million years, tectonic, seismic, volcanic, um, how the valleys, mountains, rocks were formed. Um, and it's really going to focus in on how these formations and this climate affects things like wildfire, floods, and earthquakes in this region. So that one's gonna be pretty fun. And then after that, we don't have a date set, but we're gonna do something on nature sketching. And this is somebody who does this professionally, um, virtually. So this is really gonna be a special event, um, teaching us how to all actually sketch certain natural objects. Um, and then we also will have a video showcase of naturalist videos that were created, maybe little preserve tours or them talking about why they like to be a naturalist or even teaching us a game that they play with the third to fifth graders that come up to the preserve. Um, and again, that doesn't have a date set, but please go to our website to see these events and more and to register at cei.sonoma.edu slash calendar. Um, so I just want to say thank you all for really stepping up and coming to our longest event, an hour and a half, and then stepping up to talk about photos, even when Rick wasn't able to join us at the end. So we're just really a great group of people, and I'm so happy to have you all part of our community. I'm going to. Will you put the email in the chat, please? I sure can. Yes, yeah, the the website, and I'll also put my email if you want to contact me. So I'm going to stop screen sharing, and that way, if Rick is here he can step up. Um, I'm going to make sure that he is a host. Um, his audio is not here, but his video is. So I'm going to ask to start his video in case he can wave at us at least. <laughs> All right, we'll see if he does. Oh, I think I just saw his microphone turn on. Apparently they were telling me that lightning struck their house between oh. now, just oh. now and like a few days ago when we did our test run. And so it took out some of the, or maybe not struck their house, but like right where their equipment for internet is. Um, so we had a lot of there. lightning in Grouse Valley recently. Ask him if he got a picture of the lightning. Right? Hey, you got to take advantage of the moment. <laughs> oh, do I hear you, Rick? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay, so what happened is Monday night after we did our our run with Carrie, ah, I just closed me out of it. Oh well. Am I still are we still with you? You're here at audio, we just can't see you, but I'm gonna ask to start your video again just in case. Do you see that pop up I on your screen? So let me see what we got going on here, what I closed and didn't close. No, not that. <laughs> we actually did get through everybody's photographs. Okay, great. Um, no, I'm not seeing it pop up. I did see it. I got it. I think I closed the window. I just did it again. I'm okay. going to keep asking. <laughs> yes. You wish to proceed. Yes. Not responding. <laughs> right, I know it's the end of the class, and Rick and I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us. And we would love to do another class sometime. Um, maybe if you have specific recommendations on what you would like to see as far as nature photography and accessible photography. So I thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Oh my gosh, I have to take a photograph of us all waving. You guys are doing this automatically. Okay, so before you leave, mm -hmm. hi. <laughs> oh, that's going on the Facebook page. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, Great guys, class. I did have one more last thing to say is that we are creating, fingers crossed, an anthology of works that have come out of these public events. So if you have a photograph that you actually took during the event um, that you feel good enough to have 
put into an anthology. It's okay if you want to tweak it a little bit first and then send it to me, but we would really love to include some from today. So um, I'm again going to put my email in the chat and uh, then, yeah, if those could get emailed to me uh, earlier is better so you don't forget, but if it needs to wait a week or two, that's okay too because we won't be putting it together till next fall. Um, and I just want to say one more big thank you to Rick and Jari, who really put a lot of effort into this program to adapt it to this virtual space. They were originally going to lead an event on the preserve, so they really helped pivot with us. Um, and so we're just we're just feeling all the gratitude right now. And I, I'm hoping that all of you stay connected to us, to each other, to nature, and uh, we'll see you all real soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Gary. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry and Rick. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Michael. Come.